All right, church security. Do we need it? Should we have it? Usually the first question is, where do we start? We start right here. Come with me. All right. Usually up front, there's three questions that's asked, okay? It's, what can we do? And what resources do we have that are going to help us in our efforts? And when do we need to start this? What we'll do is we'll consider those, the answers to those questions in two time frames, short term and long term. We're going to turn those questions inside out and make them statements, all right? What we can do right now with what we have when we need to. And when we need to, that's probably the most important question to answer, all right? That could be tomorrow, could be this afternoon, could be in the very next minute or the next few seconds. When we're talking implementing a security plan, ask yourself this question. What would happen? What would be the cost if I waited one year? If I waited a month, if I waited a week, if I wait till tomorrow. So probably. what if it happens tomorrow? What do you do then? Hey, if you got a SWAT team waiting around the corner or, or maybe you got 10 armed members that, that they know how to handle a problem like that, right? Then I guess you'd be in the category of ready for anything. Or are you? In most of these cases, you can't afford to wait. You know, I mean, it, this could be a matter of your life or someone else's life. What's going to happen? We can't, we can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next year, uh, let alone the, in the next minute, right? Uh, the worst case scenario could be right around the next corner. All right, so earlier we talked about three questions that are commonly asked, all right? And we turned them into a statement. What I can do with what I have when I need to, all right? And those are three components of a good plan. So before we put that plan in place, which we definitely need a plan in place before any problems present themselves, there's three factors that we need to consider here. Right? You need to know your capabilities, you need to know your resources, and you need to know your environment. Let's talk about capabilities. Can you or your members stop whatever threat it is you're expecting from coming through your doors and hurting people? Do they possess the KSAs, the knowledge, skills, and abilities? and experience to do so? You know, other than tactics or what gun to carry or whose job is it, no one possesses the skills, knowledge, abilities, or even experience to handle something like that. You need to work on that. That needs to be your goal. Once you get through that, we'll talk about resources. Do you and your members have access to the resources, the tools, the skills, the knowledge, the abilities, and the experience to help improve in those areas where you're lacking, those areas where you're behind? We'll talk about every aspect of your, of your organization from leadership all the way down, how it works towards maintaining the security of your organization, your site, your people, and your building. So some of the things we're talking about here are communications, talking about physical security, team dynamics, uh, security team dynamics, membership, training, firearms training, firearm safety. That's just a brief list of the resources that, that you need to consider and that you need to have in your pocket or have access to. Now let's talk environment. All right, environment, not just the building that you're in or the property that you're on, but your neighborhood, the city, what surrounds you, the area that surrounds you, the region that you're in, okay? Your little patch of goodness may be right in the middle of a gang war or a huge drug problem and it's plaguing the nation and it encroaches a little bit more each and every day. Okay? These factors, Okay, these factors, your capabilities, your resources, and your environment. Those three factors together help you define your next steps for a focused and practice plan. For now, let's focus on your most pressing issue. All right, and to do that, we're gonna use WIN, W-I-N. All right, earlier, we talked about considering all the factors that we've talked about so far into two time frames. We got a short-term time frame and a long-term. The short-term, we're gonna use the acronym WIN, W-I-N. What's important now, all right? It's a question, it's a statement, it makes a good motto also. What we need to think of, we need to ask ourselves, is there a problem, is there an issue, is there something going on right now that if we don't address it soon, tomorrow, next week, there's a problem that we don't address right now that someone could get hurt. You need to ask yourself also, are we prepared to handle that problem right now? And if not, call me, seriously. All right, so for the long term, and you know, in the frame of mind of, of emergency preparedness overall, we don't want to look at just the survivability of our, of our organization or our membership. We want to look at the continued viability. I'll talk about that in another video. 
Now consider this. Emergency planning is about planning for events that we hope won't happen. Most of the problems we face are little ones, but it's the other ones that we need to be concerned about. So preparedness is planning for survival, all right? And is that all we want to do? Do we just want to survive, you know, barely making it by? Or do we want to survive well? Do we want to be in a good position when, we're, when we survive? Well, being in a good position after a problem is, means to prepare well before the problem. Okay, emergency preparedness, being prepared, that's what it's all about, okay? Having a good plan allows us, allows you to be prepared for anything happening tomorrow, as well as being well prepared to be viable, contributing to, to the community, uh, continuing to provide services to the community, to your membership, to your organization, well after a problem. That means continuing to thrive, to be productive, to live, pretty much the way we want to, the way we plan to. We need to plan for what happens after these problems. So the end result of a disaster depends greatly upon the preparedness of those involved and what they've done to prepare for that disaster. All right, some things are unavoidable, but for the most part, we know what's coming. We can see it. We know what's coming to our doors. You need to be prepared. You need to have a plan. If you don't have one, you need to call me. Hi, I'm Rob with Blue Horse Threat Mitigation Strategies and Security Solutions. We prepare churches, homes, and businesses in developing emergency plans for nearly everything from tornadoes to active shooters, uh, upgrading security options and measures, and developing security teams with over 30 years of military, law enforcement, and federal level emergency preparedness experience in evaluation, training, and consultation, as well as executive branch experience in continuity planning, recovery, and eventually a return to normal. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have to help you be better prepared for the problems you're facing or you think you're going to face. All right, give me a call. Let's talk.